Hey champions, welcome back to your favorite channel, Why Juice. So we started with the chemical properties of metals and non-metals, and we've already talked about how they react with oxygen and water. But there are so many more reactions that are happening around us. So in today's class, let's continue with the chemical properties and explore some more reactions. So. What's the agenda for today? Today we'll be talking about reaction with acids, reaction with bases, displacement reaction, and of course uses of metals and non-metals. We know they are very very useful, but today we'll talk about the specific examples as well. Now, in the last class, as I told you, we've covered the reactions with oxygen and water, so we've mastered this. Now, what's left? How are metals and non-metals actually react with acids and bases? So let's get started with these two subtopics, which are super important. And of course, the first one would be reaction of metals with acids and reaction of non-metals with acids. So acids is what we'll be exploring first. Okay, what do we have over here? We have a metal that is aluminium. You can see this aluminium silvery metal out there, and it's being added to dilute hydrochloric acid. And you'll see bubbles are coming out. Just notice carefully, observe carefully. You will see bubbles are coming out, right? So yes, we can observe bubbles of a gas in the beaker. So yes, definitely we can say that metals react with acids. The reaction is definitely going to take place, right? Generally speaking. So in chemistry, we very conveniently use the word generally. You also don't forget to mention that, right? Now this gas can actually be tested by a pop sound test. What is this? What is this pop sound test? So when a burning matchstick is brought near this gas, a pop sound is being produced, which tells us that the gas is hydrogen. So hydrogen actually, it's a colorless, odorless, flammable gas, which burns with a pop sound. So yes, in general, definitely we can say that metals they react with dilute acid to give us what? To give us salt plus. Hydrogen, and you know how to check the presence of hydrogen using the pop sound. So metals generally are producing hydrogen gas. So if in case in the exam they ask you which gas is being produced, you know the answer. Now it's hydrogen gas. All right. Now we talked about aluminium, but there are so many other metals also. Iron, copper, magnesium. Are all of these metals reacting the same way with acids? In fact, are all metals actually reacting with dilute acids or not? There is so much more to explore, and for that, download Bijus the Learning app and get all your doubts clarified instantly. So we now have covered the reaction of metals with acids. Let's move on and see how are non-metals reacting with acids. Let's say we have sulfur with us. You know, sulfur is yellow in color, right? Sulfur powder we have, and we've added it in dilute hydrochloric acid. Well, in this case, not much is happening. Even if we'll keep waiting, I don't think so. Something is going to happen. So yes, non-metals generally do not react with acids. This is a very important point that you have to note. So there you go. Now you know how metals react with acids, how non-metals react with acids. Now let's see how they react with bases. Okay, reaction with bases, of course, of net metals and non-metals. We'll start with metals first, and you know we've taken aluminium as the reference as of now. So let's talk about aluminium only. Aluminium in sodium hydroxide. So aluminium, it's a metal that's actually being added to sodium hydroxide. That's a base. In this case, again, look carefully. You'll actually notice that hydrogen gas bubbles are being. Formed. And we know how to test this gas using the pop sound test. So there you go. We can definitely say that metals plus bases. This time we've taken bases, right? What is being produced? Salt plus hydrogen. Now, definitely you can say that generally metals react with bases like sodium hydroxide to produce hydrogen gas. But please note that such reactions are not possible with all metals. We've taken aluminium over here. That is definitely giving us hydrogen gas. But this is not true in every case. This is not true in case of all the metals. That's why very conveniently we just place the term generally out there. So chemistry is full of exceptions. You'll notice this slowly, okay? Now coming to non-metals. How are non-metals reacting with bases? Well, have a look over here. 
seems pretty complex right but don't you worry we'll definitely take this up you will be studying this with us in higher classes so stay connected all right so yes we can summarize this as metals can react with acids and bases to give you hydrogen gas and we can check the presence using a pop sound and non metals generally they do not react with acids and of course we also can conclude that in a way different metals are reacting in different ways with all of these with oxygen water acids and bases so in a way every metal and non metal it's unique in its own way just like you and me isn't it so yes uniqueness of metals and non metal metals is very much there so there you go we can happily conclude this as well so if i ask you are metals are equally reactive i know what your answer would be your answer would be an obvious no right so this brings us to a very important concept of displacement reactions okay let's imagine one thing there's one single seat and you seat it okay somebody really strong comes in the person can easily displace you and take away the seat right this happens sometimes but the same is true at the atomic level also so in case you have two metals there would be a metal that is stronger let's see what happens so we have zinc and copper sulfate over here with us so copper sulfate is the blue solution and zinc is being added to this when this happens zinc sulfate is being formed plus copper so zinc has actually taken the place of copper which tells us that zinc is actually more reactive than copper so such reactions are known as displacement reactions where more reactive metal displaces a less reactive metal from its compound in aqueous solution in this case the more reactive it goes without saying is zinc so it has replaced it has displaced copper from its salt solution now what do we have next if we are saying in displacement reaction a more reactive is displacing the less reactive metal obviously the reverse will also be applicable so a less reactive metal will not be able to displace the more reactive metal you keep this in mind okay and yes this is what are displacement reactions now we keep using metals and non metals in our everyday life there are so many uses of metals there are so many uses of non metals let's quickly cover this up let's discuss some of the uses of metals and non metals in our day to day life we'll start with metals now you'll notice a lot of machinery around you that is made up of metals automobiles aeroplanes trains satellites utensils all these are made up of metals in fact you'll also notice electric wires around you you know that copper is used to make them right or maybe the thermometer that we use mercury is in that or the jewelry that we wear silver or gold is there so so many metals around you which are constantly being used maybe when you go to school you know you are actually using aluminium foil for packaging so uses of metals is something that we are very much aware of and we are thankful that you know these metals are so very helpful now coming to non metals we have discussed that metals are very very helpful but so are non metals for example oxygen it's used for combustion it's used for breathing so yes non metals are equally important then nitrogen is used in fertilizers we've got chlorine that is being used in water purification then iodine in antiseptics then we've got sulfur which is used to manufacture crackers and let's see what else do we have phosphorus used to make match sticks and hydrogen which is a common non metal it is used in rocket fuels then carbon you all know about carbon right it's also very important non metal used to make electrodes so there are so many non metals around us and the list will you know the list will keep going on and on and on so i'll just put extra over there all right with this we've come to the end of this short session i hope all the topics are crystal clear to all of you and yes you can connect with us on telegram as well because everything filtered everything sorted is there so you'll find all the session notes quiz very interesting sunday fun facts revision questions homework questions all the updates everything over there just on telegram so yes join us connect with us over there we'll be waiting for all of you and this goes without saying guys we've definitely got you covered so don't worry we are here to make sure that you is all your exams yes i have a homework question for all of you 
so we are talking about metals we are talking about non metals now in the comment section i want all of you to tell me do you know what are metalloids can you give me an example of a metalloid we've discussed so many metals we've discussed the examples of non metals this is a new term and i want you to explore more about this so let me know any one example of a metalloid in the comment section and yes don't forget to hit the like share and subscribe button so keep working hard keep smiling and i'll see you super soon again